Hi everyone, my name is Jenisa Hernandez. I'm a BCABA. I'm here with ABA Exam Academy. And today we're gonna go over task list B specifically about validity, internal validity, external validity, and we're gonna do mock questions and more mock questions and a little bit of more more, more mock questions. <laughs> So just in case uh, any of you out there in YouTube, uh, whoever doesn't know about us, we uh, are we give our services uh, to anybody who is interested in passing the BCABA or BCBA exam. And we uh, give personalized tutoring sessions. You can go to our website and we give our services like today, which are free weekly study sessions. And um, the disclaimer that we usually usually read is that the meetings are meant for us to have an open discussion, discussion and collaboration, and on, uh, so we can all understand the BA um, CB fourth edition task list concepts. And to do this, it's important for all the viewers and participants to double check the information that is provided for us today. Like I said, my name is Yaniso Hernandez. I'm a BCABA, and the PowerPoint and mock questions were all created by me. And just uh, for ethical considerations, refrain from sharing any BCBA, BCABA test questions during the meeting or from sharing any paid resources or identifiable client information. If we do share open resources, we always give credit to those who deserve it. And um, today I used Cooper Mayer, a little bit mainly Cooper. Okay, let's get it started, guys. So today, validity is um, it's a measurement has a when a measurement has a validity that is directly related to the phenomenon measured and to the reason for measuring it. What do we mean by that? Who wants to explain it in their own words? If not, I'll just say it because this is like for us to start warming up. What this means is that in ABA. The word validity is referring to, okay, so the data that we collected. Can I try? Go ahead, Sophie. Um, is it like, what do I want to know and why am I measuring the behavior? Well, yes. So when you finish collecting the data, let's say, uh, the, uh, so you want to know, oh, was, is this data that I currently have valid or not valid? To know if it's valid, is it, it's basically, did I really collect the data that I was supposed to collect? Basically, if you want to know, for example, we want to know how high a child screams. How high in, in how, how, how loud a child screams. Are we going to collect data on duration? No. No. Uh, we will have to collect another type of data that we we'll have to measure. Uh, I would I would say magnitude. Would you say magnitude? Yeah. It can be intensity, yeah, magnitude. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will have to find one of those weird like apps and stuff like that. So that's what it means. So basically, I already gave an example. So I rewrote the definition here. And let's just break our heads a little bit and just give me an example of a measurement that has no validity. Or if it's easier, give me one that has validity. So for example, I am collecting data on a child doing blah, 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 blah. But in reality, I used the wrong measurement. So how would you say that? I have an example. Go ahead, Rita. Which one are you going to give me so I know where to write it? Example of a measurement that has no validity. Good. Thank you. So. For instance, if you're trying to find out how much someone weighs and you end up measuring the height, that's yeah. not valid. Yes, right? So that's not valid. So thank you, that's a great example. Because you use the, what, what happened? Because you use the incorrect what? Measurement measurement oh, dimension right? yeah. Yeah. let's use measurement i like measurement better so um so can you give me a good one can anybody else give me a good one measuring 
Just think of your clients, which one do would you use that it's valid? Counting the frequency of uh, of the client SIB. And that's the measurement, that's the measurement that you use, right? So what is it that you wanted to know? You count the frequency because you wanted to know what? Anybody, anybody who wants to have an idea, just throw it out there. You will count the frequency of a client's SIB when you want to know what? How much? How long? How much? How many times it happens? Times per hour. Love it. Thank you for everybody speaking it out. So how you want to know how many, many times per hour. An hour. Oh, okay. Per hour the child. I'm writing so child engages in SIB. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you guys. That was awesome. Okay. So here's having that in mind. Now we're talking about validity within the task list B, which is about experimental designs within, uh, uh, there are two types of validity in experimental design. There's internal validity and external validity. Does anybody know? If you know it, just throw it out there. If not, I have it right here to discuss it. Internal validity refers to validity within the independent. The functional relationship for the independent and the external deals with social significance, right? All right, thank you, uh, Vanessa and Bridget. And I think Trisha already, uh, also said something about it. So internal validity has to do with the extent to which the experience demonstrates that the change in the behavior are due to the IV. And somebody said, I think, Bridget, you said functional relation, right? Yes. So to me, I had here at the bottom, I added a new section, which is the keywords. I want to start looking at keywords for our vocabulary words. So once we see it in the mock questions, there are keywords that can pop out there like flashes that, oh, this word is relating to this uh, concept. Um, so uh, a key question that I said that maybe we can ask ourselves to differentiate it between internal validity and external validity is, was there a functional relationship demonstrated between the dependent variable and the independent variable. Okay, just as fluence, just for fluency, what is the dependent variable, guys? Dependent variable is the behavior. the behavior that you want to change. Perfect. Thank you, Bridget and Vanessa. And the independent variable? Your intervention. Is the intervention. Control. Intervention or the treatment, which is the same thing. Perfect. Now let's go to external validity, which is the one that I personally was not too familiar with it. Does anybody know what it is? Social significance. It, I heard somebody else. I know is the only thing I know is social oh. significance. No, I thought I had some, I had heard somebody else. So, Replicating. So uh, uh, socially significant is sort of related with it, but the way they specific, it's related, but the way they specifically said it was that the way we know if a study has external validity is by replicating the experiment. So, so if you replicate, uh, it, it, so the uh, well, when you replicate it in different areas and with different uh, people with in different conditions, then you can find if that is is be is able to generalize it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So the keywords that I used here are generality mm. 
and replication. Generality and replication. But the social, uh, the, the social um, part that she was talking about, I didn't, to tell the truth, I didn't necessarily read it here. May we have to read more into it? This one is in page uh, 245. But it is the, the first thing that popped into my head when I thought about it, what she, mm -hmm. what she said. So, but this one is what Cooper says in page 245, and it goes beyond that. Uh, so the key thing that I wanted you to think about is let's remember external validity has to do with repeating the experiment. Mm. Different, uh, and there are two types of ways that we can repeat it. The first one is direct replication, and the second one is systematic replication. Is anybody familiar with it? Because I wasn't, because it's one of those things that is there in Cooper and amongst a lot of other things. If not, we can go over it. But as a review of what we just studied, so there are two types of validity in experimental design. Can, can you tell me one of one, one of them, the one that we're more familiar with? The one that we just talked about. Internal validity. Internal validity. Thank you, Bridget. And the other one is the one that we're not that familiar with? External validity. External validity. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, I, I need to highlight it. Okay. External validity. So we already said it. External validity has two types. Which are the two types? Direct replication and systematic replication. Thank you. Thank you, Trisha. Yes, direct replication, systematic replication. Okay, so here I put the two definitions and I want you to basically you're gonna see that once you read it you're gonna find out because it's pretty common sense we just need to review it to put those words into our you know our brain and to just remember it for the test and for everyday practice so okay i'm gonna give you a definition number one and you're gonna tell me where to put it the researcher makes every effort to duplicate exactly the conditions of an earlier experiment External validity. Same, oh, I'm sorry, give me a second. Oh, sorry. It could be with, a, um, uh, the, uh, it could be with the same subject or with a different subject. Okay, so I think it was Trisha. Was it you, Trisha, who said? Yes. External validity. So you're right. Anybody else agrees with Trisha or disagrees? I agree with Trisha. Okay, Lily, thank you. So it is external validity, but within external validity, where would you put it? Would you put it in direct replication or in systematic replication? Direct replication. Is there a replication? Direct. Direct. Mm -hmm. It is direct. What tells you that it's direct? Exactly. The same. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and the other one is that researchers conduct repeated experimentation in which the con conditions of interest are su supposedly, no, I'm sorry, purposely and systematically varied. So where would I put that one? Systematic replication. Systematic replication. And here the key thing it would be a systematic, but I don't want you to focus Very. on that one because mm, it's funny I use it. So can you give me another thing that would tell you, oh, it is systematic? Very, very, very. So I guess the thing, if I were in a mock test while doing a test, I would think, okay, if they give me these two, these three options, external validity, direct replication, systematic replication. Okay, let's say that they give you one that is saying, uh, they are using, uh, um, Daniel in the experiment. Then they want to replicate it to find out the validity of the experiment. And they're gonna use, in the second time around, they're gonna use Daniel also. Which one is that, guys? Direct. Direct. Why am I not gonna write external validity? Because... Yeah. Go ahead, you know it, go ahead. Oh, because they're going to use the same person again. They're going to use the same person again. 
and because external validity is the more general term it would be the the, the umbrella and we want to use the more specific one right mm -hmm. yes okay because in this case we had these three as options awesome i think you got it okay so we're gonna do mock questions these mock questions this one in particular i created so just as a for us to learn the concept it's okay if you get it wrong uh because uh again it's one of those tricky concepts that we don't usually talk about so uh which one is the primary method for determining the extent to which research findings have generality across subjects do you think it's intra-subject replication do you think it's replication inter-subject replication or subject replication subject replication okay so we have one for what is the difference between intra-subject and subject we're gonna that's that's what we're gonna go over now so we have one for d who else i say a a makes sense but a I thought, I thought with d so we have one for D, one for A. Anybody else? If you're shy to speak up, just write it in the chat. I'm gonna see if I can see the chat. Hey, Annie, I'm here. If they write on the chat, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Damien. Okay, guys, we just need one more, one more to move on. Don't be too picky. This one is just for us to learn. I don't learn. know if you got me, but I said A. A, we'll go with A. Okay, so the, it's actually C. Sorry, I'm not sure how to help. I'm still learning. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you're still learning. We all are. <laughs> okay, guys, so look, A is uh, intra-subject replication, which is the same subject. They're using the same subject. And it's in within the primary method, they're using the same subject. Intersubject replication is they're using different subjects. Yeah. So uh, basically they're using, let's put it here, uh, Daniel and Daniel. Mm -hmm. hmm. All we gotta remember is that it's the primary method for determining the extent to which the research findings have generality across subjects. So when you wanna know if the research finding has generality across subject, the first thing you're gonna do is use different subjects. That's what they say, or the primary, the, the most important one. Mm. And this one would be Impressive. Daniel and Anna Ariel. The reason why I wrote it wasn't that as much as this, is that I want you to remember this. When the target for intra is same, inter, different. Make sense? Yeah, I was confused. I thought they meant the opposite. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said since the beginning, it's just for us to learn it. And when we make the mistake, then we learn it better. We just have to figure out a a trick to to memorize it i was trying to but i didn't come up with anything if you come up with anything just uh post it in the youtube video or uh in facebook okay so minerva is checking the val validity in experimental design she wants to find out if the child stopped screening because the teacher praised him when he was raising his hand minerva was checking for intra-subject replication internal validity, intersubject replication, or external validity? B. B. I have two for B. I think it was Sophie and um, Bridget, um, if I saw correctly. Anything, anybody else? B. B, awesome. Yay! Good job, guys. It is. So go ahead, show off. Tell me why. Tell me what do I have to highlight here that is gonna show me why that's the answer. What is the key words in the, in the question? 
The child stopped screaming because the teacher prays. The relationship between stop screaming and praise. Yes. Yes. So because because tells me that that is the cause, the function, right? That something is a function. And the teacher prays, it's what? The what? The result. The yes, but that the teacher praise would be in a research or in the a consequence. consequences. Reinforcement. Yeah. Reinforcement. You're right, but when we're talking, when we're remember, rem sorry, remember we're talking about research. So when we're talking about research, the teacher praise oh. would it be the behavior that we're working or is the IV. it the that we're using? The IV. The, yes. Uh, treat, uh, treatment. Treatment. Pigment or uh, uh, IV, which is their AKAs, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Guys. Okay, so which one is the the behavior that we're trying to change? Screaming. And then shout. Yeah. So this one, if we're gonna make it fancy, we're gonna say dependent variable. Dependent variable. Yeah, because we know what we're talking about, right, girls or boys? <laughs> <laughs> Boys and girls. <laughs> yeah. Nice job, guys. Okay, we got that one. Let's go to this one. I'm using, I'm trying to use words from the book. It makes it a little trickier. So uh, here we go. The external validity of research findings in applied behavioral analysis is assessed, established, and specified through the blank of experiments. So the blank is determination, replication, development, or manipulation. Hmm. B, like boy. B. Right. B. Replication. Thank you, Rita, Minerva, and Vanessa. The only thing that has makes sense is B. B, yes. Nice job, guys. It is B. Here's the reason why I wrote it, and the, 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 answer, the, the multiple choices are not that complicated. The reason why I wrote it is because the wording sounds very tricky, right? Mm -hmm. So it seems like it's a very complicated thing, but in reality, it's not. In reality, what it means is that the... What does it mean? Who wants to explain it? Just the whole process. I can say it. It says that it, what it means is that when you want to check the external validity, when you want to assess the internal validity or establish it, or uh, you need to do it by doing replication, which is basically the definition of external validity. So keywords here: external validity, needs, replication. Right, guys? Yes, Jenny. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's too hard to unmute when I'm just throwing things out there. <laughs> okay, so here you go. Let's do the next one. The initial step in evaluating blank is to decide whether to accept the data as valid and accurate measures of the target behavior over the course of the experiment. A, over validity, B, external validity, C, under validity, or D, internal validity. It should be D. It should be D. It should be D. I heard two D and one A, is that correct? And another A. Let's go, we have four people. Thank you guys, you're participating a lot. The answer is, D. D. I've never heard of over validity. You tell me if you've heard of it or on the validity. I've never heard of that one. Uh, so, in other words, what this mumbo jumbo on the top set means is that the initial step, so the first step for us to evaluate the internal validity of an experiment is to know if the data shows what it is originally was meant to, to measure. And what is that key, what is that uh, term that, that tells, what is that? When the data shows what it is originally meant to measure? 
It's accurate. Validity or your validity. Functional analysis. I mean, it's called, it's called Demi went over it yesterday. Treatment integrity. Yeah. Go, Trisha. Good girls. And I think we have a boy, but you know, I don't hear the boy talking, so that's why I keep saying boy and girls. <laughs> okay, guys, you did awesome. I think that's all for today. We went, we did good. We went over it fast. The key things to remember is external validity and internal validity. What is the difference between external validity and internal validity? Who's brave? Mm -hmm. I'll try. So inter internal validity is making sure that the IV is truly responsible for the change in the DV. And mm -hmm. the external uh, validity is being able to replicate the results in different settings. Direct replication and systematic replication. Yes. So, so, uh, so what is the difference? Thank you, Rita and, and Bridget. Thank you for pointing this out. So what is the direct, what's the difference between direct replication and systematic replication? Direct replication is um, one, maybe one subject, or, but um, systematic replication may vary subject and it might be across subject. I don't know. So I'm gonna go over that one really quick. So, uh, you have it. Uh, you you're you're in the right track. But I want to keep clear. In direct replication, everything stays the same. The only thing oh, that yes. changes is the subject would change either one subject or two subjects. In systematic replication, the conditions change. Oh, condition. Okay. Good review, guys. Good review. I, I liked it. So if anybody needs any specific help, just uh, schedule a tutoring session with us at www.avafamacademy.com. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, my God. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Yanni. You're welcome. Nice job, Yanni. Hey, my team. You were quiet. Mm -hmm. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, I was just in the back.